uh, what Netanyahu and his group are really like is by following Israeli news and politics, even as far back as late 2014. For example, and this is from a Haaretz article, which is titled, Russian Immigrants Leaving Israel Discouraged by Conversion Woes. And the subheadline, figures show that one-third of Israelis who immigrated in recent years were not accepted as Jews in the country. And let me read you part of the article. Speaking at a Jerusalem conference on Israeli expat communities, Yogev Karasenti, a political advisor to the Jewish Agency, noted that more than one-third of the 15,900 Israelis who left the country in 2012 were defined by the Central Bureau of Statistics as other. This is a term that is generally used to describe immigrants from the former Soviet Union who were eligible for Israeli citizenship under the law of return but are not considered Jewish according to Halakha. And here's what's even scarier. If you go to failed Messiah, which is written by a man who was born Masorti or conservative and then he became Haredi for a while and became conservative again. He cites all his sources. He does everything that he needs to do. You will see that Netanyahu is pretty much, for lack of a better term, the Obama of the Israeli right and basically the Haredi Obama. He doesn't believe in freedom of religion. He doesn't believe in freedom of speech. He doesn't believe in everything else that was in the Declaration of Establishment. And people say, oh, Netanyahu's a real leader, and oh, Obama's taking all our freedoms away. Again, if you saw the real Netanyahu for who he was, if you were following Israeli news, you would see that actually Netanyahu, as I said, is the Obama of the Israeli right. In fact, you could call Netanyahu the Haredi Obama posing as a Kaloni. Kaloni means secular, by the way. According to failedmessiah.com, and this is the article that's very relevant, Netanyahu, Haredim are natural partners. And this article came out just in late February. And again, this is very scary. And I kept telling you and others kept saying, hey, this Netanyahu guy, I could use a whole bunch of words here, but I think I'm going to let you come to your own, and I'm going to let you come to your own conclusions. Anyway, so, Netanyahu, Chaladim are natural partners. The Chaladim are natural partners. I have great sympathy for their tradition. Every Shabbat, I study the weekly Torah portion. And here goes the article that Shmira Rosenberg, excuse me, Shamara Rosenberg wrote very well. And, ooh, this is scary. And he cites all this, like I said. In a meeting in his home with members of the press, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was asked a question by Yitzhak Korowitz of the Behari Haredim. In answer to Horowitz, Netanyahu declared that criminal sanctions for Haredi draft dodgers will be eliminated in the new funding law after the next election if he is Prime Minister. I always said that I would not let a ta Torah scholar sit in prison, Netanyahu noted. Netanyahu's move will likely found to be illegal by the High Court of Justice, but Netanyahu has consistently skirted or ignored High Court rulings in the past that Chaladim or other allies disliked. He likely would do the same thing in this case as well, and in any case, the High Court ruling against decriminalization could take as much as two years to wind through the courts before being issued. Plenty of time for thousands of Chaladim to successfully dodge the draft. And it gets worse. And not only that, but people talk about Ben Gurion's mistake, which gave Godot Hissel and their allies control over pretty much the whole Israeli government. Again, people talk about Ben Gurion's mistake. What Netanyahu is doing is even worse. I don't know what to call it. I mean, there's 
maybe Netanyahu's deliberation, Netanyahu's coup, Netanyahu's destruction, I don't know. It certainly is not a mistake what Netanyahu is doing. By the way, I should mention that that's one of Riley's toys back there, so if you hear any background noise, I apologize for that. It responds to motions and vibrations. Anyway, back to my point. So people think, oh, Netanyahu's such a great guy. Well, they have no idea what it's like for those who are Olim and Sabras. They have no idea what it's like for those of us in the diaspora who want to make Aliyah but can't because we're not considered Jewish enough. And if we did try to make Aliyah, we'd have to go through, through so many minutiae and loopholes and whatever else that we'd either end up like the Olim and the Sabras who left to go back to Russia and left to go back to other places, or we'd be kicked out. And what's scary is that there was even one, not exactly sure what channel this was, this might have either been Channel 2 or Channel 10, they did a documentary a while back showing how a group of Jewish Christians were almost close to being kicked out just because of their faith and because of Netanyahu, groups like Yad Lakim and Shas and United Torah Judaism, which are two parties with whom Netanyahu would have a coalition if he's reelected, pretty much have control over everything they can now. And it is scary. And again, people, I even heard one person say that, or I even read that one person said that Netanyahu was, quote unquote, an honest Christian man. That cannot be further from the truth. And even Netanyahu would say that he's not a Christian. And so, if Messianic Jews slash Jewish Christians are not getting support under Netanyahu, what on earth makes you think that he's an honest Christian man? And if other non haredi Jews are getting no support, what makes you think that Netanyahu cares about Israel, whether Israel in the land of Israel, or it's all in the diaspora. Just to put it, just put it quite candidly, know what you're talking about and think before you speak.